This is an astrotometry log, Wednesday, October 15th, 2008. And I want to explain something about the nature of hypertime. I want to explain more clearly um, what I'm talking about when I say that the sun is the primary time axis. Now, in astrotometry, the sun and every luminous thing, every photon, is a higher dimensional object. And the light that we see and the shadow that the light makes is a three-dimensional protrusion, a protrusion of the object into the third dimensional space. And the object itself is more accurately conceived or considered as a higher dimensional object, as an object that has more than three dimensions. So in other words, if you could imagine yourself, if you think about the way you move through time, if you think about how you go from place to place, moment to moment, you only exist in one place at a time. Um, once you leave some place, you're gone. And the sun isn't like that. The sun exists in multiple times and multiple spaces. So in other words, the sun connects three-dimensional worlds. In other words, the sun that you see, if you go outside and you look at the sun, part of that sun, part of what you're seeing, is actually shining in another time part of that object actually exists in another time and it connects your time with that time and in the case of the Sun it connects many different times it's a it's a higher dimensional object it's a it's a four dimension you can if you call time the fourth dimension then it's a fourth a fourth dimensional object but in astrotometry, the sun is the conveyor of space through hypertime. The, the, the sun is the conveyor of matter through hypertime. In other words, the nature of a photon is that it is a transverse wave. There's this, there's this concept in um, quantum mechanics called the spin entanglement because of the nature of the photon. The photon moves in two directions. One end of the photon hits one place, and another end of the photon hits another place. And that those two places are connected through the origin of the photon. And so the sun is connecting times and spaces through its physical dimension. In other words, the physical thing that we see as the sun is that connection. The sun is that connection through time. The heliocentric model supposes that the Earth rotates around the, on its axis every 24 hours and um, makes an orbit around the sun every year. And the chronocentric model supposes that the sun, what we see in the sky, represents 365 days of that object. In other words, the object that we're looking at exists, that same object exists in 365 other days. Parts of it, in, in part, what appears as the whole are the parts that connect those other those other days now there's an order to it it's an ordered pattern and the the uh, connections that it makes are uh, most likely mathematical in nature they're most likely um, geometric there's a there's most likely a very specific geometry to the nature of the space that, that represents this higher dimensional ordering. This object is not a single object. In other words, 
if you if it does represent 365 days well what about the day before that would represent something else that would represent the uh, the 365 minus 1 and so when you go back to that year it implies that there's a sort of forking it implies that there's a sort of um, junction in the conduits of time these are these are these would be these would be the equivalents of the junctions in the conduits of time and I think our biggest clue for what their physical manifestation might be is the planets and the stars there's a video uh, it'll, I don't know when you're going to be listening to this but there's a if you listen if you're listening today or tomorrow uh, maybe I'll leave it up for a few more days there's a video on the the featured videos on astrotometry right now um, just basically on the the front of the channel that explains uh, four dimensions explains four dimensional um, theory mechanics and so the sun is the real thing it's the real McCoy with that and it's the it's kind of the missing link I mean this is this is kind of the missing link for the the more advanced the more evolved understanding of the nature of reality and so if you can if you can grab a hold of this then you're going to be stepping into an entirely new world and it is a is a much more advanced much more um, evolved way of understanding the universe